Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us. This morning we're going to listen to um, Ganesh Atavashisha and then part of a talk which was given by Shamataji in 1982 titled What You Can Do. But first let's collectively bow down in front of Shamataji, raise our kundalini and put ourselves into bandhan.
एष अथर्व शीर्षम ओ नमस्ते गणपत प्रत्यक्ष तत्वसी साक्षात्मात्मी सत्यम वच्मी अवक्ता अवश्रोतारम अवदातारम अवधातारम अवानुचा नमवशिष्यम अवपश्चात्तात अवपुरस्तात अवोत्तरात्तात अवदक्षिणात्तात अवचोर्ध्वात्तात अवाधरात्तात सर्वतो मां पाहि पाहि समंतात त्वम वाङ्मयस्त्वम चिन्मयः मयस्व ब्रह्ममय सच्चिदनंदीयसी प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मसी ज्ञानमयो विज्ञानमयोसी सर्व जगदिदो जायते सर्व जगदिदिषति सर्व जगदिदयमेशति जगदिदि प्रत्येतिरापो नलो नीलो नारी वाक्पदातीतमूलाधारस्थितोसी निशक्तित्रयात्मक ोगिनो ध्यास्तुस्व सूर्यस्व चंद्रमास्व ब्रह्मभूर्भुवस्व गणादि पूर्वुच्चार्य वर्णादि तदन अनुस्वार ुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्वारूपमुस्
श्री निर्मला देव्य नमो नम Just let that settle for a, a couple of minutes. This talk was given in London in 1982. Day of departure for me for India and <coughs> I'm very sad that I have to leave my children here. It's a sad day, no doubt. But I have to go, as you know, and you all are going to join me, quite a lot of you. But those who are going to stay here have to understand that they are here with a purpose, not without a purpose. <coughs> and during my absence, One should not waste that time. On the contrary, you must have put your mind to find out what you can do to improve the conditions of other Sahajogis. Many of you are <coughs> so yogis and you have felt cool breeze from the very first day and have been feeling it all through. But there are so many still who don't even feel the cool breeze and they feel very funny about it and feel sort of guilty. Sometimes they feel that they are something of a low tide or something wrong with them, that they don't feel the cool breeze. So one of the greatest worry for all of you should be that there are some people who are not feeling anything in their hands. They have been coming to Sahaja Yoga, have been religiously working it out, but they haven't been able to achieve the first experience of good grace.
for this? There can be many, many reasons. Not one, but there can be many reasons. And without getting involved into these reasons, if you try to see within yourself, and if others who have felt it are compassionate and kind, they can definitely help us. But the worst thing that we human beings suffer from is ego. And this ego makes us feel small. At the slightest thing anybody tries to help. Some people might have a hurt ego, might have a bloated ego, might have a state of mind which does not even see the ego. And that is why it is difficult to talk to anyone what is to be done to improve. So those who are better off suffer from a dilemma. They don't want to hurt another person and another fear they have that if they try to help others, their ego might go up <laughs> because they are afraid of their own ego. But we must understand that once we have come to Sahaja Yoga, once our Kundalini has been awakened, then all of us have now become part and parcel of one body, of one body of the great primordial being. In a body as human bodies are, supposing a finger is now, then all the body's attention is on that finger to cure it and all the other fingers and the whole body, the brain, the mind you can call it, everything is worried about that finger, how to make it all right. Naturally there is no ego for these fingers, so nobody feels hurt or bad. And the fingers are also anxious to do it because they can feel the problem of the finger which is numb. If there is some problem, say, internally within your body, all the cells which are needed to correct that problem will rush, the blood will rush, the heart will pump, everything will work out in a very coordinated way. But nobody feels hurt then why should I take help from anyone? Neither the one who helps is frightened or afraid or also feels the evil. The reason is the cells of the body are under the complete control of one brain or one personality or one self. But in Sahaja Yoga, this collectivity is not yet established. That's why people feel hurt, people hurt each other. They have fear. Of another cell, which is the brother cell, which is the partner cell, which is the part and parcel of your own being. Are we afraid of our eyes or afraid of our nose? Are we afraid of our hands or of our feet? And this collectivity is such a vicious circle that unless and until you become really collective, 
<coughs> you cannot feel another person. And unless and until you have that sense of responsibility of collectivity built in yourself, you cannot help another person. So a certain amount of growth is needed in the whole body to be sensitive enough to help each other, to be wise enough to help each other, to be resourceful enough to really nourish another. And that development has to come again through collectivity. It's most surprising. I know sometimes people feel that there are Sahaja Yogis who are not even of one mind. I agree that somebody will say, your Vishuddhi is catching, another will say, your heart is catching, another will say, your Royal uh, discussion. They don't say that all of them will say the same thing. One will say this, one will say that, one will say that. The reason is some of them have developed a certain sensitivity to a certain center, but not to all the centers. And that's how there can be a difference of opinion as there should not be at all. So firstly we must all know that we are still growing. We have to still grow. In Sahaja Yoga, even if you get your Realization, that doesn't mean you have suddenly become John the Baptist. We all have to grow. And for growing and growth we have to discard something and we have to accept something. And the best thing that should be discarded is your ego. And it comes in so many ways that it creates a barrier between you and your Creator. Sometimes this ego can take you to anti-God activities and you will not know that it is your ego is taking down there. Because the identification with ego has been not in this life but in many lives before us. So to get misidentified or we can say to get dissolved, dissolved or this ego or to get away from this ego is a difficult. But as you grow out of the mud of this ego, the lotus starts becoming fragrant and everybody can see that fragrance. It is more difficult in the Western countries than in the East because the whole basis of the growth in the West has been so far based on ego and competition. There is no competition in Sahaja just think, if one finger starts competing with another finger, what will happen? It is as absurd as that. Now we are talking of roots. We are not talking of the shoot, what people have achieved through Western's style of thinking. Now we have to go deep down into the roots. So we must change our methods. There is no competition at all among roots. They help each other. If one fails, another goes and helps. That is how this living process can work out. We have to change our ways of tackling ourselves and others. And we have to realize that God's power of love is the highest, deepest and the mightiest. And this is the power of love that we have to accept. 
But love just does not mean that you spoil someone or tell lies just to please someone. It may not be pleasing in the beginning, maybe, but ultimately it will. So when we, you have to talk to someone, of course you need not be arrogant or rude at all. It should be sweet, you should be kind, compassionate. But it's no diplomacy going on there. It's not any that you are trying to get out some votes from that person. It's a guideline you are giving to the person. And the guideline can be even silent. The greatest guideline for anyone is the precepts you follow, the ideals you have, the way you behave. You know in India one person gave realization to ten thousand people. And how he did, how he impressed others. He impressed others because he went to an office, a commissioner's office, for some his personal work. And then he started talking. in such a manner that they couldn't understand that this man has come for some practical everyday to day stuff and the way he's talking the way he's behaving the way he's dignified and so far how is he managing that so they said who is your guru immediately came into their head, must be some good guru here. Yeah. He said, I have no guru, I have only a mother. He said, we all have. That's how it started. So one must know that by your own behavior you can talk to another person. <clears throat> and that behavior should not be superficial, must be coming from the heart, the concern, the concern that this person should be. Genuine concern. And even a dog knows that. You don't have to tell anybody by taking some sort of a vow, but even a dog knows what is a genuine concern and what is not a genuine concern. With that concern, you have to talk. And that is what we lack, is the genuineness within ourselves. Our heart is not open. Open your hearts. Now you have entered into the kingdom of God. Open your hearts. Just see yourself, why have you got fear? For what? Ultimately what is going to happen? We are all going to die, isn't it? So put that, fix that point. One, we are going to die, whether a tiger eats us or we jump from anywhere. Something has to happen to us to die. So what should, why should there be any fear? Now if there could be a genuine fear is this that you may not receive your realization. Even this genuine fear has no meaning because this will also kill your chances of realization. If you believe that God is great and that His compassion is great, really from your heart you will get your realization no doubt. You all are there for that and 
The divine power itself is anxious to do it. Extremely anxious. You can see. Can you believe that there are so many people who are realized so much today? We'll continue with the silent meditation.
Joshua Mataji. Um, that was the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic language. It's just so beautiful. So we'll conclude our program today by um, saying the last verse of the Three Great Mantras. Om Twame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Moksha Pradaini Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Shumaji. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. When you're ready to finish your meditation, please bow down in front of Shamataji, raise your kundalini and put yourself into bandhan. Have a wonderful day ahead everybody. Jai Shumataji. Thank mm-hmm. you.
چشم عجیب 